Hi everyone, in this video I'll be showing how to make a simple material that is so effective at resisting high temperatures I can trust even a thin sheet to protect my hand from this torch. Cold to the touch. Earlier this week, I stumbled across a documentary series about a material invented over 40 years ago by a hairdresser named Maurice Ward. This material, called Starlight, could protect against any source of heat that was thrown against it, even undergoing tests by NASA and other organizations which found it effectively resisted temperatures beyond 10,000 degrees Celsius. Maurice Ward, the inventor of this so-called starlight, showed it off on TV in the 90s, demonstrating that it could protect an egg from the heat of a torch for several minutes, leaving the egg completely raw when it was cracked open. This egg demonstration, among others, generated so much public interest in starlight as a fireproofing material that even today it's considered an invention that should have changed the world. But it didn't. Maurice Ward was so protective of his invention that he never told anyone outside of his own family how it was made. And when it was tested by NASA and others, he would not let the samples out of his sight for fear of reverse engineering. In 2011, he died, apparently taking the recipe for Starlight with him. This has given Starlight an almost legendary status, a material that could have saved lives, but now it's gone. Now, as I watched the documentary on this material only a few nights ago, I realized almost immediately that I had made something very similar to it before. The primary mechanism that is noted in the recorded footage of Starlight is that it generates an expanding carbon foam. This is the same mechanism that I have used in earlier videos to create ferro snake fireworks, which create a pillar of carbon in response to heat. I've even tested the carbon foam generated by these fireworks for its potential as an insulating material. With this prior experience, I had a pretty good idea of how to change the composition to achieve very similar properties as starlight. And it's a lot easier than you think. You'll need three ingredients for this, cornstarch, baking soda, and regular white glue. I'll explain the purpose of each of these things later. The first thing we do is measure out some cornstarch. I'll fill about half this cup. Now I'll need some baking soda, about a teaspoon's worth, or 10% compared to the amount of cornstarch. To achieve the ideal result, it might pay to be precise in dialing in the ratios of these two ingredients, but I've found the result is reliable even without measuring. Now for the glue, I need to add as much as it takes to turn this mixture into a putty, which is a surprisingly large amount. I start with a small amount at first, and continue to add more until it turns into the consistency of modeling clay, at which point I'll be able to work it with my hands and we'll be finished. Ideally, this putty should be applied to a surface and allowed to dry before testing, because the moisture from the glue can cause some undesirable thermal conductivity. But even in this less than ideal state, it still resists heat extremely well. Now let's examine this a little closer to see how it works. As I hit this with a torch, it quickly turns black and bubbles of carbon begin to form. Carbon being the most basic component of any organic material is left behind as a skeleton when any organic matter is heated in an environment where there is not enough oxygen for a complete combustion reaction to occur. In this case, when the cornstarch begins to burn, the baking soda releases carbon dioxide, 
which displaces the air and protects the carbon as it forms. Carbon dioxide that builds up below the surface pushes the newly formed carbon outwards as bubbles. So we get this effect where the deeper the heat goes into the material, the more it's pushed away by this expanding foam of carbon. Carbon itself, once it's in this solid state, is extremely temperature resistant with one of the highest melting points of any material. Combine these things together and it's a pretty impressive result. There's something else that makes this especially interesting. I've been heating this piece for about a minute, and when I turn the torch off, it's cold enough to touch almost instantly. This is because carbon foam is an excellent black body radiator, which is a scientific term used to describe an object that, among other things, releases energy very quickly. So this attribute is working for us as well. As the torch is heating our material, the energy is being dissipated just as quickly as it's absorbed. It might be impossible to find out if the formula that I've presented in this video is even close to what was in the original Starlight, but I think you'll agree that the results I've achieved are pretty promising. Not bad. I should also note that cornstarch is just one of many potential sources for the carbon in this composition. Flour would work in a similar way, and I also tested powdered sugar, which is what I used for the ferro snake fireworks shown earlier. Sugar worked well to generate a protective carbon foam, maybe even better than cornstarch, but it was dangerous in the sense that a molten layer of sugar rested right below the carbon, which can stick to skin and cause burns if the carbon layer is brushed away. The glue I used is also just one of many options. Cornstarch itself can be turned into a glue called dextrin if it's baked in an oven, in which case the mixture could be turned into a dough simply by adding water. The mixture in this video using white PVA glue can be made more sticky so it adheres better to surfaces simply by adding a solvent like acetone or methyl acetate, both of which can be found in nail polish remover. Well, hopefully this video has given you plenty of ideas. If you decide to try this for yourself, please be safe with fire and don't try aiming a torch at your hand. It's inherently dangerous. Even if the material is made correctly, things can go wrong. Now I could go on talking about why I don't think Starlight ever made it into commercial products, despite its incredible performance. I think there's more to it than the inventor simply never trusting anyone enough to get it out into the world. But maybe I'll talk about that in a future video if there's enough interest. I want to thank you for watching this video and please leave me comments below. I'd love to hear from you and I still read all of my comments. If you really enjoy my videos, please consider supporting them on Patreon. And I have some big projects coming up, so make sure you're subscribed with email updates so you're sure to get notifications. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.